Charlie Brancevic and Graham Crosby. Checked out like a pretty good race here at Gwinton. Maybe I'll let these fellas off scot free so they can go and get ready for it. As to who'll be first to greet the judge, maybe it'll be me. No point in hanging around. Here's Neil Crompton. In on your head, Wilco. Sensational, but now when are you going to take the other crook mask off? <laughs> Thank you very much, Gary, or Ned, should I call him? And welcome to our telecast for our first event, which will be for the super sedans over 10 laps. These are sports sedan cars and a very good healthy field of sports sedans down here at Winton this afternoon. And there you see in car number one, Bradley Jones from Aldery driving the Brian Thompson V8 Chev Monza. And in fact, we might take a moment out to have a look at the way they'll line up in the top 12 positions for this race. On pole position, Brad Jones in the Mozo. Alongside him, Brian Thompson in the Mercedes-Benz. On the second row of the grid, Bob Jolly. And alongside him, a welcome return, Rusty French in the Turbo Porsche. On the third row of the grid, we've got Mike Saviri in the Tirana, sharing that row with Graham Smith in the Mazda. The next row of the grid is Greg Crick in the Mazda, then Peter McKenzie in a Holden. And position nine, Ken House in an Escort with Barry Bray in a very fast Nissan car number 36. And rounding out the top 12, Tony Hubbard in his Falcon and Wayne Mankin in a Turbo Mazda. So it's a pretty good lineup, as I said, a full field and it'll be particularly interesting to see how Brad Jones and Brian Thompson shape up in these very, very fast sports sedans. Both of them churning out in excess of 500 brake horsepower. Brad Jones was the winner of the preliminary race earlier on today when Thompson unfortunately blew a turbo. Mike Raymond, I think we're in for a treat. I certainly agree with you, Neil. Uh, not only do we have uh, fine fields here for Round 9's Touring Car Championship battle today, but an enormous crowd here at Winton Motor Raceway. Must be 12 or 13,000 people already into the racetrack. And they tell us that uh, the Highway Patrol are trying to get the crowd in and they are banked up for four or five kilometres in either direction. That's only a section, one small section of the crowd stretched out right around the Winton Motor Raceway. What promises to be an entertaining afternoon of motorsport. We hope you enjoy it here with Seven Sport. There's the man who sits on pole position, young Brad Jones in Brian Thompson's Monza and Brian himself sharing the front row in the Turbo Mercedes. Recorded a pretty stunning 59.8 second lap time this morning in the V8 Chev Monza. Certainly a contrast to the production Perrier Starion that he normally drives. And uh, Ned, I reckon we're in for a beauty here. I think we're in for a terrific race. And I see that Bob Jolly, who was very pessimistic after uh, the incident at Amaru last week about getting to Winton, is in fact there and on the second row of the grid doing well. 200 hours of work have gone into the car in the last week. That's a great performance as we await the start. There's Rusty French's Porsche 935. Hasn't driven the car for some two and a half seasons, but he was the, na the uh, reigning national champion uh, when he did drive the car, 83, I think it was. Just about ready for the start. Brad Jones, the pole, Brian Thompson, the outside. And they get away quickly off the start. Jones down on the inside. Thompson goes with him. Look at brilliant start here from Rusty French as they make their way down into the right-hander. And he will drop into third place immediately. Bob Jolly right behind him, but it'll be Brad Jones coming out of that sweeper and working the back part of the course. Brian Thompson right in behind him. Rusty French with Bob Jolly on his tail as they move into the first left-hander through this very fast sweeping left hand corner. One car has gone off, that's Mike Saviri in the Tirana. As we look at Rusty French on the right hand side of the screen, it's Bob Jolly in behind him and the two red cars up front for first and second and of course it's Brad Jones leading Brian Thompson. Great scrap this for third and fourth up to the right hander that brings them along down the back straight and Brad Jones opening the taps now on the Chevy Monza and really storms down the back straight. Six. Opened a slight gap then on Brian Thompson as they come through Ollie's S's and back onto the start finishing straight. End of lap number one, nine to go. It's Brad Jones easing the power on as he comes down through the pit straight. Brian Thompson right in behind. 600 brake horsepower at the disposal of Jones as he comes through the right-hander at the end of the pit straight. Thompson closing up now. Down to the left-hander, Thompson very close indeed to his young charge, Brad Jones. Those two uh, red machines starting to pull away well and truly from Rusty French. 
Pam in the Porsche and he has Bob Jolly right behind him. Average speed at the sorts of lap times that they're doing at the moment is around about 130 kilometres per hour. Once again working their way towards the back straight here at Winton and it will be Brad Jones. We'll see whether or not Thompson can pull out of the draft and pass. Rusty French getting a little closer this time. Bob Jolly is the next one back behind him as they come down to Ollie's S's once again. Yeah, French has broken away from Bob Jolly and is trying to get on the tail of uh, Brian Thompson as they come back onto the main straightaway once more. At the top four cars certainly have a pretty big pull over the rest of the field. Once again into turn number one. Very, very short straight. Probably not more than uh, 100 metres. Winds back around. Then a run down to sweeping left-hander. Thompson closing right up too as they go into the left-hander. Right on Jones' tail. Almost under the shadow of the wing. Brian was telling me this morning that depending on the amount of turbo boost they use in the bends, the car develops anywhere between 800 and 1,000 brake horsepower. That's getting up towards Formula One output. This is the 935 Porsche of Rusty French, car number four. Yeah, he might not have driven it for two and a half years, but French isn't rusty. No. The back straight. Down to Ollie's S's yet again, and Rusty French moves up closer here to Thompson. Thought about just fainting. Well, a look down the inside there of Brad Jones, but the next problem he'll face is a spot to pass here at Winton. Sideways out of the turn. Comes Brad Jones across the line. Three down, seven remain. French's car had a very nasty miss in it in yesterday's practice, and it was also carrying on this morning in the preliminary race. Uh, went past our commentary point that time it also sounded a little off song one wonders how quick it might be if he can get all of that power to the ground jones car number one the car that bob jane of course drove when it was in the t-mark colors peter brock had a turn at the wheel had a rather unfortunate accident at adelaide international raceway alan grice has driven the car in fact dick johnson has also been in there he drove it at the world endurance championship race at sandown and this car here of rusty french's was taken to the national sports car championship um, capably in the hands of alan jones for a win in 1982. outside of the top four tony hubbard is uh, holding down fifth spot on the racetrack at the moment driving a falcon came off 11th position on the starting grid so he's made up a lot of ground but there is a big space between fourth place getter uh, rob jolly and him well jones is now starting to open up a reasonable gap over thompson listen to these cars as they boom down the very short pit straight down through Coca-Cola and the bravest part of the circuit coming up when they approach this fast left-hand sweep of the brave guys just having a lift and then keeping power on all the way a lot of g-forces in the car this is a five litre Chev twin turbo underneath what should be a Mercedes body certainly doesn't resemble it at the moment well the Thompson stable at uh, at this stage of the race locking up a one two for this special homestead motor ends super sedan scratch race over 10 laps here it went in this afternoon all oh, problems there number 27 that's mankin in the mazda had problems oh. yesterday with this car and it did exactly that that's a turbo failure we go back to our leading duo brad jones and brian thompson and they've now opened up a little gap over rusty french they've completed five laps so we're coming up to half distance. Have a look at the smoke haze though over the back part of the course. Mankin pulled off. I th thought he was going to uh, kill the engine for a while, but it's still uh, powering on. The lead grass over there. About to go through that and disappear in a cloud of smoke, but emerge again. Nose to tail still. Brad Jones and Brian Thompson. By gee, what a battle up front has been between this pair. Interesting thing is that the Benz weighs in at around about 1,100 kilograms. Quite a bit heavier than the Monza. It's about 960. The two of them fairly evenly matched on the road, despite the fact that the Benz has a lot more horsepower. What a, what a performance from Jones, who specialises in production car racing, and we mentioned last weekend at Sydney's Amaru Park that he could well be driving a Group A Mitsubishi Starion in the not-too-distant future, so it's a busy season for him this year. Totally the rising star in Australian motorsport. He's done very well, of course, in uh, Group E, driving the Perrier Starion and in sports sedans, doing uh, ever so well, and Brian Thompson, Chevrolet Monza, number one. Four laps remaining in the race. Thompson closes up this time on the short shoot, the run down to the approach onto the back straight, and the left-hand sweeper coming up next, Rusty French. Not far away, is he? No. Been a good drive by Rusty French. 
considering the thing's still got a miss in it, I think he's doing a fine job. The car handles so beautifully, he closes right up as they come here to the right-hand corner. You'll see in the background, he's come right up underneath the wing of the Benz. What a lovely looking motor car. Bob Jolly still running in fourth place. A massive rebuild after the accident at uh, Amaru Park last weekend. Broke a rocker arm in his uh, heat race this morning. He's back there running fourth. Tony Hubbard running fifth in the Falcon, then Graham Smith in a Mazda car 92 in the sixth spot. We saw Bob Jolly then just entering the back straight as these three drivers come up onto the pit straight now, passing some slower traffic, and French here with a real chance to go up and move up one notch, but it's one thing to catch somebody here, another to pass. And look at that Benz jump out of the corner. The Porsche takes a little longer to wind up the turbo. You can quite literally see the front of the car getting light when it starts churning out horsepower. It really sits down on its heels gone through Mike Lynn Nissan turn and worked their way up to Auto Sport now, the right-hander. And there's the scrap continuing between Brian Thompson and the Turbo Merc. Right behind him, Rusty French in the Porsche number four. See the car squirting up and down on brakes, back on the power. Watch the way this Porsche comes out of the turn. Up comes the nose. Now he makes a run for the inside. He's going to have to work hard because Thompson's coming across to the right-hand side of the road, left as we face it, and Rusty tries to round him up on the outside, gets it sideways. Hangs back in third spot, a little bit of a fright. This is letting Jones get away in front, though, with a winning break. Once again, Rusty French closes up on Brian Thompson. No room for passing in this part of the course. Two laps to go. Is that enough time for Thompson to... Uh French rather to make another attempt. Driver has to be really delicate exercising all of his skill in these cars. Gentle wheel movements, easy on all the pedals. So much brake horsepower under your right foot and particularly hard work from here on into this part of the course where they go through the series of right and left handers. Low gear stuff and easing power on so as not to run the car off the side of the circuit or heat up the rear tyres, which is very easy to do in these types of cars. Here's the chance for French, right on the tail of Thompson as they come out of this uh, corner on to uh, the back straight. Now he dodges down the outside, hasn't got the power, I don't think, to pull up. No, has another go as they come down to the bottom corner. He's going to be caught wide again What's and can't get by. Pretty hard to go around the outside of somebody there, but he's right under the wing of the bends at the moment. This time through, nine down, it'll be one to go, so Rusty's really going to have to pull it out. Brad Jones, meanwhile, goes through and puts another slower car between them. That's going to help his chances for a win here all the way. Bob Jolly, incidentally, still in fourth. That great scrap that's been continuing between Brian Thompson and Rusty French has really allowed Brad Jones off the hook, so to speak. Up front, he's opened that gap probably two or three car lengths now. Heading up to uh, the right-hander at Autosport. Thompson, very, very quickly indeed coming up on one of the slower cars. The way Brad's going at the moment, he could very well upset the lap record here, which is held by Tony Edmondson in that powerful Alfa Romeo. He set the time in 58.8 seconds, and Jones getting down to those fives oh. as French goes around at Castrol Corner and backs neatly off the circuit. So it'll be a Thompson 1-2 as far as his cars are concerned, but Brad Jones will be the driver as he comes through all his S's. French is just back on the circuit ahead of Bob Jolly. I think Jolly, yeah, Jolly's going to get past him, so it'll be Bob Jolly in third place. Checkered flag is out. And there's the victory to Brad Jones. Brian Thompson crossing the line in second place in the Mercedes. And uh, it's a desperate battle for third right down to the wire, but Bob Jolly, virtue of the spin by Rusty French, is going to get it. Yes, he does. And bad luck for Rusty French because he drove a, a really aggressive race and deserved better luck, I thought. Well, a good way to start the day for Brad Jones. Let's recap the placings on the Castrol scoreboard. Brad Jones, in car number one, takes the win. Second spot will go to Brian Thompson in the Mercedes, and third place goes to good old Bob Jolly in the Commodore. <laughs>